What's up friends, I'm Tony, and we're currently living in a knowledge economy, where the value of what we produce is no longer based on our physical strength, but rather on the strength of what we know and the strength of our brains. The brain is like a muscle that we can train and we can strengthen over time. And one way to do this is to learn a completely new skill that will create new neural connections and new pathways different from the ones we use in our daily lives. That is where touch typing comes in, which is simply typing with most of your fingers and without looking at the keyboard. It is a simple skill that if you spend a long time in front of your computer like I do, it will not only strengthen your brain, but it will make you more productive. And it will even work as a micro skill that will teach you concepts about learning that you could apply later on on larger scale skills. The average typing speed is around 40 words per minute. And by learning the right techniques and making sure that you stick to them over time, I am sure that you could at least double that. When I first discovered that touch typing was even a thing, I was typing at around 45 words per minute. Minutes. And then I started working on learning the right techniques and making sure that I stuck with them. And after some time, they became second nature in my new natural way of typing. And now my personal high speed has been a little over 90 words per minute. As I said, this skill will train and strengthen your brain and it will make you more productive. If you're anything like me, you spend a good chunk of your day in front of a computer and most of that time typing. That's why anything that we can learn that will make the communication with our computers more efficient will save us effort and time and we can spend all that energy that we save in something that is more important. For example, what you're actually trying to type. And I am also calling touch typing a micro skill because as opposed to other larger scale skills like learning to play the piano or learning a new language, touch typing is a much smaller skill that you can see the results more quickly. But the great thing is that it still works as a small scale model. And with this model, you can learn new learning concepts that you could apply to those bigger skills. You can think of a micro skill as it being a dojo where you can learn things that you can later scale up and then apply on other other areas of your life. So those new learning concepts that I'm talking about and the ones that we'll touch on today are first, the Pareto Principle, in which we'll talk about the highest value things that we can focus on early on that will yield the most results. Then there's deliberate practice, which is how we're going to get the most out of our practice time. And finally, we'll talk about the valley of disappointment. We're going to talk about how to watch out for it and how to overcome it. Turns out that touch typing is a low hanging fruit when it comes to skills to learn. There are many resources online already that make it free to learn and you don't need any equipment aside from a keyboard, which you most likely have already. To learn touch typing, we would initially start by learning which fingers press which keys. Then we would commit to using only those finger placements and without looking at the keyboard. That would mean that we would then spend some time typing very slowly while we're getting used to this new way of typing, but we would eventually overcome our previous speed. We end up typing faster than before because we're using more fingers and we're not looking at the keyboard anymore. That means that eventually you make up for all the time and effort that you put in to learn this new skill because you're typing faster and with less effort. So let's first look into how we can learn touch typing and some tips that will make our typing faster overall. Here, it is helpful to keep the Pareto principle in mind, which states that for many outcomes, 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. When it comes to learning a new skill, we can think of it as getting 80% of the benefits out of 20% of the effort that we put in. And for touch typing and increasing your typing speed more specifically, to get that 80%, here is the 20% I would recommend focusing on. The first one is to learn and stick to the correct finger placements. The second one is to never look at the keyboard. And finally, the third one is to learn the most important keyboard shortcuts. For the first two points to learn the finger placements and to not look at the keyboard at all, that is where deliberate practice comes in. It is important to know the distinction between actively practicing something as opposed to simply repeating something that you already know. Even though we might spend a lot of our time typing, for example, that doesn't mean that we're increasing our typing speed unless we're deliberately working to improve it. Deliberate practice is all about immersing yourself into what you're learning and placing your full attention on pushing past what you already know. With touch typing, it is about focusing and learning with your mind and your hands fully immersed on what you're learning. There are a lot of resources online where you can learn touch typing. I use this website called Peter's Online Typing Course, which I really liked because it's pretty straightforward and easy to follow along. 
but I've seen some other examples of some more interactive websites that you can check out and you can try as well. I'll put both of the links down in the description. The important thing is that you practice deliberately, focusing your full attention on not making mistakes, not looking at the keyboard, and making sure to keep in mind that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. If you practice focusing on not making any mistakes, you'll have to take your time and pay more attention, but that will make you faster in the end and that will save you a lot of time of practice in the end and in the long run because you're practicing only correct movements and you're not practicing mistakes. You're more effective by sending a coherent signal to the brain. So once you've learned the finger placements and you're capable of typing and fixing mistakes without looking at the keyboard, then there's this website where you can practice and you can test your typing speed called 10 Fast Fingers. It will test you for one minute on the most common words of the language that you choose, and it will tell you what your typing speed was at the end. I'll give it a go so you can see how it works, and I'll start off in real time and then I'll speed it up. So you can check out 10 Fast Fingers where you can practice and you can test your typing speed and see how you improve over time. So now you know how to learn touch typing and how to practice. And the next thing we need to look into is that we need to stay away from our mouse as much as we can. Because it turns out that we can use a lot of keyboard shortcuts that make it unnecessary for us to use the mouse and make it a lot more efficient in the communication with us and the computer. So one thing that we can do is to see how we can fix mistakes and we can move around text more quickly by using keyboard shortcuts that if you haven't used already, they're complete game changers. So let's say that we're typing something and we make a mistake. The slow way of fixing that would be to simply press the backspace key many times and type it again. But there is a much faster way of doing this by pressing option and backspace for Mac or control and backspace if you're on Windows. This will delete the entire word. You can also use Option if you're on Mac and Control if you're on Windows with your left and right arrow keys to move around text more quickly. And if you combine these with Shift, you can select entire words. So that's the way you can edit your text more easily without needing to use the mouse by combining Option and Backspace or arrows and Shift. On Mac, you can also use Command and left or right arrow keys to move to the beginning or end of the line respectively. You can also combine that with shift to select the entire line or backspace to delete the entire line. I haven't found a way to move around the line like this on Windows, but you should be able to delete the entire line using control shift greater than and backspace. On Mac, you can also use option and the up or down arrow keys to go to the beginning or the end of the paragraph respectively. Again, you can combine this with shift and you can select the entire paragraph. This is useful when you want to delete it or copy and paste it somewhere else. So now you know how to learn to type faster and how to use keyboard shortcuts to fix mistakes and edit text more quickly. As I mentioned, the most important thing is that you learn the keyboard placements and that you practice them without looking at the keyboard. Getting to this point will take some effort, especially in the beginning, and especially if it means changing the way we've typed our entire lives, which would mean changing something that we're already used to doing. Because it may seem very hard in the beginning, we need to watch out for this stage in the learning process because this is where we might find ourselves in the valley of disappointment. It is that point where our expectations of seeing results do not match what we're actually seeing. And we may think that we're putting a lot of effort and we're not seeing the benefits. It's important to remember that just like planting a tree, the work that you put into cultivating a new skill is stored and it simply takes time for it to bear fruit. That is why it is very important to stay consistent and to stay persistent. Coming back each day to practice and not giving up on overcoming your old ways of typing. Because if you happen to find yourself in the value of disappointment and you decide to quit and go back to your old ways of typing, you won't get to reap the rewards of the effort that you put in. So there you have it, how to learn touch typing so you can exercise your brain, become more productive and learn new accelerated learning techniques.
It is a relatively simple and small skill that will work as a model in which you'll learn concepts that will apply to bigger skills. If you want to keep learning about these concepts with one of those bigger skills that is extremely valuable nowadays, and that will definitely stretch your brain as well, you should check out my Skillshare course on learning Python in 30 days by spending 15 minutes each day, and even finishing off with a final project in which you'll build your own Python application. It is meant for complete beginners to programming or for anyone who has learned in the past and is looking for a structured refresher. The link is in the description if you want to check that out and you'll also get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And aside from that, that was it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to drop a like, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. I am posting weekly now, so make sure to hit that bell button so you get notified when I post my next video. But until then, I hope you stay curious and I'll see you next time.